Okay, this is going to be my final and hopefully definitive me merchandise video. This is a compilation of my previous two videos on the subject, and even some additions of pieces of me merchandise I've found since. So please enjoy this hopefully comprehensive video on me merchandise. Mii's have always been in a very interesting situation when it comes to merchandise. Normally, Nintendo never fails to merchandise the hell out of every character they create. But with Mii's, it's a little bit more complicated. How do you make merchandise of such interchangeable characters that are literally meant to represent the player? Well, in a lot of ways, you don't. Compared to most other popular Nintendo characters, Mii's have had a minuscule amount of merchandise. But however small that amount is, it's not none. So that's what we'll be discussing in today's video. I'm going to be going over every single piece of me merchandise that I can possibly find. Now I'd like to emphasize that every single piece I can find does not mean every single piece there is, as a lot of this merchandise was exclusive to Japan and had rather limited sales. So there's a very high chance that there's some stuff that I will just miss. If there's something you know of that I didn't mention, please share it in the comments below. Also, huge shout out to Tumblr user Promo Stuff Art for helping me a bunch with research for this video. I'll link their blog in the description. First of all, let's talk about soundtrack CDs. While not so popular in the US, in Japan CDs are still the primary way that people purchase and listen to music. And of course, this includes game soundtracks. On Nintendo's now defunct rewards program, Club Nintendo, they released several video game soundtracks on CD. Some of these soundtracks were from Mii games, those games being Pilot Wings Resort, Wii Fit, and Tomodachi Collection. As far as I'm aware, these CDs didn't have any special songs or anything, they were just direct rips of the soundtracks. Another thing I'd like to give a brief mention to is Nintendo advertising, magazines, guidebooks, and generally any physical media that has Mii cameos. Now, if I were to list off every single time a Mii has appeared in a guidebook, magazine, or advertisement, I would be here all day. But I'll go ahead and give you a couple examples from my personal collection just so you get the idea of how these cameos would often manifest. In this Nintendo Power magazine, issue 210, December 2006, there's an article about the Mii channel describing what Mii's are and how the channel worked. In this Mario Premiere Edition guidebook, there are lots of Mii snuck throughout, the two biggest examples being the pages talking about the unlockable Mii racers and these panels on several pages, showcasing places where Mii Mii heads would appear in-game while using Mii racers. Now when it comes to the true Mii merchandise, the first thing that probably comes to mind for most are the Super Smash Bros. 4 amiibo figures. Sold individually or in a pack of all three, they were figurines of the default Mii fighters from Super Smash Bros. 4, Mii Brawler, Mii Gunner, and Mii Sword Fighter. It's amazing seeing these little guys brought to life as real 3D objects, however, this is a trait that will not reappear in any other Mii merchandise. For whatever reason, Mii Brawler seems to be the hardest to find and most expensive, however, to be fair, they're all pretty pricey. Not that every amiibo isn't expensive, but, it, you know. It's a real shame though, because I have always wanted to get my hands on these guys. I mean, they're so cool, they look awesome anywhere. On my desk, on top of my TV, on my shelf, in my jaw. Most pieces of Mii merchandise tackle the issue of Mii's customizability by simply using their own Mii's for the material. However, this isn't always the case. There have been several instances where you were able to buy products with your very own Mii on them. There was, at one point, a custom Mii keychain available on the We No Ma channel. According to this blog post, which I will link in the description, this item was given away during the last month of the We No Ma channel being up in April of 2012. 100 people each week would be able to win a custom keychain of their Mii, and I'm assuming this campaign went on for at least a few weeks. In order to enter, you would have to play this memory game with your Mii's, and if you won, you'd get a coin which you could then use on the slot machine, and if you won that, you would get the prize. This keychain would have been made in very limited amounts, so there's not much information about it. I mean, I wasn't even able to find a single image of one outside of the promotional material. Another thing relating to We No Ma is this calendar. This calendar has actually been uploaded to the Internet Archive, but this line on the pamphlet translates to something along the lines of congratulations on winning, so it may have been some sort of sweepstakes prize similar to the keychain. The way this pamphlet seemed to thank the recipient for using We No Ma makes me think this giveaway also related to the closure of the service. While we're still on the topic of We No Ma, I'd like to mention one last thing, this Mii stationery. They had stickers, stamps, and washi tape. The stamps came in two sizes, small and large. The small stamps only came in black, but the larger stamps had multiple colors to pick from. I'm not sure if it would just be your Mii's favorite color or if you got to pick it yourself. For some reason, it seems like a lot more people ordered the stamps than any of the other stationery available on Wii no Ma, or at least more people posted about them. Doing research for this video, I encountered a lot of old blogs where people talked about and shared pictures of their own custom Mii stamps. I really enjoy looking at old blogs and websites, so seeing all these people being so excited about their Mii's was a real treat. 
Street. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any good, clear images of the Mi Washi tape. I was able to find this image, but it's pretty hard to make out. Shockingly, this isn't the only Mi stationery ever sold. But this next stuff isn't just Mi stationery, it's Tomodachi Life stationery. There's Tomodachi Life file folders, pencil boxes, sticker sheets, ruler sets, sticky notes, and a picnic blanket. But I assume all of these items go together considering their similar designs and color palettes and the fact that they are all stationary related. Well, except the picnic blanket, but it is designed similarly. These sticker sheets aren't specifically Tomodachi Life, but just stickers from a bunch of games that were out at the time, including Tomodachi Life. There's one from Play Nintendo and one from Famitsu. This 3DS badge arcade sticker book has stickers of the character Nikki from the Swap Note and Swap Doodle applications, who is a me. This sticker book was actually sold in the US at certain bookstores up until very recently. I don't know exactly when they stopped selling them, but I believe it corresponded with the 3DS and Wii U's eShop closure. Here's this sticker sheet, presumably from Germany as that's the language on the sheet. I also found another piece of German merchandise, this absolutely horrifying Mii paper cutout mask. And actually, while we're on the subject of Mii masks, I found this one listing for a promotional mask of a Mii. This mask was actually from the Wii U's launch party and can be seen in this video, along with masks of other Mii's. Another item, presumed to be promotional material for the Wii, is this shirt with the quote, We're building an army. Man, can we make this a real thing? The army? You know what? Actually, I propose we build an army of Mii fans and storm Nintendo's headquarters. We'll hold all the staff hostage and force them all to play Wii music until they give us a new Tomodachi Life game. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Let's move on to merchandise only available at conventions and events. There's this lanyard with the Mi logo on it from Gamescom, as well as this 3DS lanyard with what looks to be Wii Party Mii's on it. Kind of an odd choice considering that Wii Party is, you know, a Wii game, but uh, whatever. Uh, I, I wish I could add more commentary here, but they're literally just lanyards. I, I, I don't know what you want me to say. There's also this t-shirt from the 2007 Game Developers Conference featuring Miis of Iwata, Miyamoto, and Reggie on the front, and a bunch of Miis on the back, including the default Mii boy, oddly enough. And that's all the convention merchandise I'm aware of, so uh, let's move on to the next category, books. This one might not really count as merch, but in 2011, in celebration of Golden Week, a week from April 29th to May 5th containing multiple Japanese holidays, Nintendo did a promotion teamed up with the Japanese college management company, Yoshimoto, where Miis of celebrities under their management would be distributed by a street pass by Nintendo employees walking around in Tokyo, Nagoya, Fukuoka, and Sapporo. During this promotion, they gave out these super cool booklets filled with Mii QR codes. There was also this other pamphlet put out in stores in Japan promoting the release of Tomodachi Life. This next one is just a flex because I, I literally own it. This is the official Tomodachi Life fashion catalog, released only in Japan as a Club Nintendo reward. There are about 80 pages including 24 different models wearing a variety of outfits from the game. The last two pages contain QR codes for all the models that appeared throughout the book. Also, since this book came out like 10 years ago, the ages of the Mii's here are, are really funny. Like, this Mii is supposed to be a toddler, but he's literally like 12 now. I'd also like to highlight that they all have catchphrases, most of which are pretty uninteresting, like, that's right, or okay. But this guy just says, oh, I was at the gym. Absolutely iconic. I, I love him. Okay, now let's talk about guidebooks. When I say there is a guidebook for every single Nintendo game ever made, I, well, well I, I'm exaggerating, but, but only a little bit. Again, if I were to go into detail on all of these, I'd be here all day. So here's a quick list of all the guidebooks I could find. Tomodachi Collection, Tomodachi Life, Miitopia, Pilot Rings Resort, and Wii Fit. And of course, to my knowledge, absolutely none of these books were released outside of Japan. Nearly all of these Tomodachi Life and Tomodachi Collection books were actually appendixes, mostly from Famitsu or Nintendo Dream magazines sometimes come with these things called appendixes, which are like little extra trinkets that come with your magazine each issue, often something like a booklet, stickers, a DVD, or a postcard. First off, here's the Tomodachi Collection Funny and Similar Me Making Book. I found a website perfectly explaining what this book is, so I'll read you a translation of their description. I will also link to the original article in the description. This guidebook explains techniques for creating Mii avatars for fans of Tomodachi Collection. Tomoko Ogawara, a professional portrait artist, gives tips on how to create Mii avatars that look exactly like people close to you or people you admire. In addition to how to create a Mii, the book also includes examples of Mii's by Mrs. Ogawara and a total of 606 items that can be used to decorate the Mii. For those who want to play Tomodachi Collection to the fullest, this book is a must-have reference. 
This website also has some scans of a few pages, although the image quality is too low for me to translate them. Next we have the Tamodachi Life Interior and Fashion Coordination book. This book, or more accurately, magazine, was a Famitsu Special Appendix. Famitsu being a Japanese gaming magazine. As seen on the table of contents, it included lists of all the items in the game. Here's another Famitsu issue, the Tomodachi Life Surprising Special Feature Book. And again, we have the table of contents for this one too. To me, this magazine looks like sort of an overview of a bunch of features and items from the game. Also, this one entry on the table of contents seems to say something like editorial staff me QR codes, which is super interesting. However, I was unfortunately not able to find pictures of any of these QR codes. Now, I believe this one is just another, you know, same old Tomodachi Life guidebook. However, it has these absolutely adorable illustrations. We can only see a few from these screenshots, but they're just oozing with charm. This is a Tomodachi Life magazine, which also appears to come with an appendix. It also advertises having me QR codes in it. This is a total guess, but I feel like this one was probably targeting a younger female demographic. You know, the bright pink cover, the fact that all the me's on the cover are female, and a focus on romance and fashion. Which of course, manly men like me would never indulge in. We're ultra masculine alpha males who play real manly games like Animal Crossing. Here's another Tomodachi Life magazine. This one also appears to have an appendix and some stickers. Quote, Introducing the comprehensive guidebook for the Nintendo 3DS game Tomodachi Life. From the basics of the game to everything you can do on the island and various facilities, this book covers it all. Additionally, there's a special selection catalog featuring island specialties such as gourmet food, fashion, hats, interior items, treasures, and more. For those who struggle with me creation, there are me creation improvement techniques too. Plus, the special bonus includes a me directory with numerous QR codes for original me characters that you can use in the game. Get this book and enjoy Tomodachi life to the fullest. And again, I don't have any pictures of these QR codes, I don't know what these me's are. Here's another Famitsu appendix, this one being from the March 2010 issue and relating to the Tomodachi collection. Here's some Tomodachi collection sheet music. I couldn't find a lot of information on this one, but it does exist, apparently. There's this Tomodachi collection strategy guide, which was a Nintendo Dream appendix. This Dengeki Nintendo and two Nintendo Dream issues have Tomodachi Life themed covers, however, the magazines themselves are not exclusively about Tomodachi Life, they just prominently feature articles about the game. Okay, that's all the books, but there's one last item I've been saving till the very end of this video. This mysterious DS carrying case. This one really confused me, because if you know anything about Miis, you'll know that they hardly featured on the DS at all. I mean, the DS only had five games that featured Miis, like three of which were exclusive to Japan. So why have Miis on a DS accessory of all things? I was only able to find this one set of images from an eBay listing, and apparently whoever listed this item does not know how to hold a camera because these photographs were very blurry. I could make out the parts saying, you are Nintendo and one focused, but because it's lighter, the text below it was completely indecipherable. And googling, you are Nintendo, one focused, did not bring anything up. So, that was it. Another piece of me history, lost to the waves of time. But wait, the, the eBay listing is still up and it's literally $11, I could just buy it. So, what did I find? Well, first of all, the text I initially couldn't read says organization. Through all the research I've done, I still don't really know what this one focused organization actually is. However, I do know that it has to do with Nintendo employees. I was able to find a few eBay listings for these employee journals from Nintendo of America with the same one focused organization logo on them. But as far as what one focused organization specifically is, I still don't know. I just know it's something within Nintendo of America. Also, I'm not really sure what the phrase you are Nintendo actually means, but one can infer that it probably has a very literal meaning as in, you, the employee, are what makes Nintendo what it is, or something along those lines. I found one other listing for this same case, but interestingly, these cases have a sticker on them saying, unreleased, never put into production. So I guess these are like prototypes or something? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. One thing that is definitely of note is that these carriers are not the same as mine. The blue circles have a white printed background, which is not present in the version that I have. The colors also appear slightly different, however, that could just be the lighting. My theory is that these cases were made to be given away to employees and that these are the earlier versions of them. However, that's just a totally random guess and in reality, I don't really know. 
Oh, also, I tried making this me into an actual me. I named her you because, like, you are Nintendo. Uh, here's her QR code. Well, here we are again. That's right, me merchandise, part two. Right after I uploaded my first me merchandise video, I began to realize how incredibly naive I was for even considering the idea that that was all the me merchandise there was. In this video, I'll go over everything that I found since my initial video, but again, this is likely not everything. During the process of making these two videos, I've come to realize how unsustainable it actually is to try to comprehensively document something like this in a video format, because once you publish the video, that's it. You can't update it or add any more. And with a subject like this, there's always going to be more information coming out. So I made a Google document, which I will link in the description, with a full list of all me merchandise that I'm aware of. Everything from this video, the video before, and anything I find afterwards. I added a little indicator at the top of the list, noting when it was last updated. So if you look at the list and it says it's updated after the upload date of this video, you'll know there's new stuff. Another mistake I made in my original video was never really providing a proper definition of what I considered to be me merchandise. But better late than never, so here is my official definition. I consider any item sold or given out as a reward to consumers by Nintendo, other than the actual games themselves, with a me on it or the me logo on it to be me merchandise. I also consider items that don't technically have Miis on them but are from Miis-centric games to be Mii merchandise as well, although I really only consider Miitopia, Tomodachi Life, and Tomodachi Collection to be true Miis-centric games. Some would say other games like the Wii series for example are Miis-centric, and while I certainly agree that those are definitely Mii games, I would argue they more focus on what your Miis are doing rather than the Miis themselves. So for the purposes of this list, they do not count. Plus, the Wii series has a ton of merchandise, which would have to be its own entirely separate video. However, there are a select few pieces of Wii series merchandise, which I would also consider to be me merchandise as well. So let's start off there. First off, there is this calendar from Club Nintendo, featuring art and renders from several Wii series games. And of course, some of these renders include Miis. Now there is an unfathomable amount of Wii Fit merchandise, and while most of it just has the Wii Fit logo or something along those lines, this Wii Fit bag from Club Nintendo features five Miis on the front. And actually, since we're on the topic of Wii Fit, let's talk about the Wii Fit U meters. These unique items were accessories for the generally unsuccessful Wii Fit sequel, Wii Fit U. Of course, this game wasn't a failure because it was bad per se, it, it just, you know, came out on the Wii U. Essentially, this accessory was a glorified pedometer, but glorified with Miis. That's right, this device had a small screen which would display your Mii on it, as well as a step counter, a clock, a thermometer, and lots of other little graphs which I cannot be bothered to comprehend. I mean, let's be real, I only care about the Miis. There were three versions, white and green, black and gray, and white and red. Since we're talking about electronics, I would also like to bring up that there were several Tomodachi Life themed 3DS's. Or more like, one Tomodachi Life themed 3DS and a bunch of other 3DS's that came with Tomodachi Life pre-installed on them. Although they did have cool packaging, however that one truly Tomodachi Life themed 3DS is just absolutely stunning. A 3DS XL, or 3DS LL as they're called in Japan. The whole console is covered in these little Tomodachi Life quote bubbles as well as a small yellow bubble in the corner, referencing the Tomodachi Life logo. Really, my only critique would be that, from afar, the design kind of looks like a Yoshi egg pattern, and very easily could be mistaken as such, but uh, really that's just a nitpick. Unfortunately, this console was only released in Japan. But man, I wish we could have gotten it in the West. I mean, it, it's so cool. As for the others, to my knowledge, they were all just normal 3DS and 2DS consoles, sold in a Tomodachi Life themed box with the game pre-installed on the console. In my last video, I somehow managed to miss out on an entire category of merchandise, that being Miitopia merchandise. There were Miitopia stickers, sticky notes, temporary tattoos, lanyards, bags, and even this awesome lunchbox. I mean, imagine showing up to school with a freaking Miitopia lunchbox, you'd, well, uh, you'd probably get bullied, actually, but at least you'd look really sick while getting beat up or something. Most of these items were like little extras for pre-ordering the game or something like that. However, there were a couple Miitopia items that were exclusive to the NSEW store in Hong Kong. There was this cool little Miitopia magnet, as well as this washi tape, or 
this washi tape? Yeah, so uh, this is kind of an interesting one. So this article talking about the Metopia merchandise sold at the NSEW store hosts an image of this Metopia washi tape. The NSEW Instagram also has a post showing a similar Metopia washi tape. However, what's strange is that if you go to NSEW's listing for Metopia or this other slightly newer Instagram post, this is what they show. A slightly different version of the same washi tape. Also, if we go back to the first design for this tape and look at the corner in this image, you can see that they actually made a typo in the word Nintendo, adding an A before the letter E, which of course is not supposed to be there as far as I'm concerned. I think it's also notable that the only images we have of this version of the tape are obviously not pictures of a real roll of tape, but rather digital renditions of what it would look like, while we do have real pictures of the second rendition. This makes me believe that this design was likely never actually printed, but was just an idea. My guess is that this was the original design for the tape, but they decided to change it. Probably to make it cheaper to print, since I imagine it's far easier to cut this straight line than the more complex edge on the original design. I think it's pretty fascinating, actually. I imagine design changes like this happen all the time, but it's usually far before the public ever gets to see it, so it's always interesting when we get these small glimpses into the merchandise designing process. The last Metopia item I know of is this King and Prince zip-up pouch, King and Prince being a Japanese idol group. And speaking of idol groups, let's talk about AKB48 Plus Me, a tie-in me game for the idol group AKB48. There are a few pieces of merchandise relating to this game. First off, there's this file folder. I actually ended up buying these file folders and there's actually two of them. I initially thought it was two sides of the same folder, but nope, these are two separate folders. Really starting to see a pattern here, huh? As well as this nail file and some AR cards. There's also an official guidebook. Because uh, apparently every single me game needs a guidebook. I mean, not that I'm complaining, the more me stuff the better. There's also these AKB48 plus me stickers, which I was actually able to get a hold of and get scans of myself. My friend Cosmos was also able to find this AKB48 plus me folding mirror and this blog containing images of this AKB48 plus me DVD that came in a set with the game, an AR card, which by the way, they have a printable version of on their website, and these photo cards in this cool envelope. I'm not sure if they count as me merchandise, but they are pretty cool either way. The original poster says here that this DVD contained 3D video clips that could be played on the 3DS. The poster provides screenshots of these videos, however, I was unable to find any recordings or uploads of the videos themselves. I was able to find this making up video for the trailer of the game, and what's interesting is that while the trailer is filmed on this green screen, they later show the group performing a dance routine on this white background which is not seen in the trailer. This background also lines up perfectly with the screenshot, so I can only assume they were filming the 3DS video here. However, this doesn't really answer many questions as we still don't have the video itself, nor do we have the second video which appears to be an entire 3 minutes long. This is the You and We Everything You Need to Know guidebook. What makes this book unique is that, as you can see advertised on the cover, it contains stickers to make your very own me inside the book itself. Now I couldn't really find any pictures of the me stickers themselves, so of course I just went ahead and bought the book. And side note, this book is really cheap and easy to find, so if you're looking to start your very own me merchandise collection, this book is a great starting point. But anyways, here are the me stickers. And uh, I don't know if my expectations were uh, too high or something, I mean, during the week or so I waited for this book to ship, I was pretty much just sitting there imagining what these epic me stickers could look like, but I feel like they're just kinda... Nah. I mean, don't get me wrong, the fact that these exist in the first place is amazing, and it's a great concept, but I just feel like there could have been a bit more. I mean, the options here are uh, pretty limited, but I do have a hunch that my expectations were just too high. For what it is, these stickers are very, very cool. And as for the book itself, it's exactly what it says on the cover. A general guidebook for the Wii, as well as Wii Sports. Now, I'm not exactly the most difficult person to amuse, but I will say, this book made me chuckle at least a couple times. I mean, it's kind of goofy, almost boomer humor. I chose this mouth shape because I rarely give a big toothy grin in photos. I'm something of a smart aleck, as my wife will confirm, and I feel like this mouth enhances the smarmy quality I wanted to capture with my me. But I do think it's still funny in a roundabout way. The next item I'd like to talk about is also Wii Sports related, being this Wii Sports baseball toy from Wendy's released in 2006, of course corresponding with the release of the Wii. 
The premise of this toy was that you would press this red button on the side to swing the Wiimote like a baseball bat, and hit these tiny plastic baseballs, almost like pinball. At the back of the field, there were indents that your balls could fall into. There were also these three small indents in the field that the balls were supposed to be able to land in, but like, they're so shallow and the balls launch so fast, I feel like it might not even be possible to get them in there. Unless you count like, manually rolling them in by tilting the entire baseball field around. For a limited time in 2006, Japanese Platinum Club Nintendo members were able to send their Miis from their Wiis to Nintendo and receive a custom Wiimote battery cover with their very own Mii printed on it. Now, we have all of the basic facts about this item, however, pretty much every article about it has this same pretty low quality picture, that is, except this blog post that my friend Cosmos found. In it, we can get a better look at the Wiimote, and this cool box it came in. In that first example image most people were using, they used these two Miis, which appear to be pretty much the default boy and girl Miis, except with slightly different mouths. Which I find kind of funny because the mouth they used for the default me boy just makes him look like the smuggest little shit ever for absolutely no reason. And by the way, this entry would not have been possible without the internet archive, specifically the Wayback Machine. Nearly all of the websites and blog posts talking about this item no longer exist, and the only way I was able to find them was through the Wayback Machine. I mean, it's not like they needed a shout out from me, but you know, I do appreciate them. Okay, now I sort of knew about these me business cards when I made my first video. However, I got a bit confused because I couldn't find them on the Wii Link Digicam Prince channel. So I thought they must have just been like advertising the normal business cards using Mii's as examples, but uh, that is not the case. Here's a quote from this 2008 article on the topic saying, quote, the latest addition to the Japanese Club Nintendo are these Mii business cards. Users can trade in 150 coins for a set of 30, which include your name, contact information, and of course, your friend code. Likely the entire point of these business cards is to make it easier for one to connect with their friends, since rarely does a person have their 96 digit friend code available. I don't suspect we'll actually see any of these cards at all, since they're redeemed through the Digicam print channel, which is also a Japanese exclusive. And of course, this article was correct. We never did see those me business cards in the West. Although it's never too late, Nintendo. And that is all the me merchandise I have for you today. Now, of course, I'm sure I missed plenty more items, but at this point, I've just come to accept that my list will never be truly complete. I had a lot of help on this video, so I will be linking all the social medias and stuff of the people who helped me. And again, check out the Google Doc if you want a full comprehensive list of all of the me books and merchandise that I'm currently aware of. Anyways, have a nice rest of your day and I will see you in the next, inevitably me related video.